back with another local race this is the brisbane criterium back from uh geez like seven years hiatus something like that i raced it in um i want to say 2010 as a cat four and i won it as a cat four so i was trying to win it again today but had a lot of really fast guys come today who weren't pre-reg so um i was kind of surprised by that at the start line but i always like good competition so um yeah but tons of fast guys today had chris reichert Robert Skinner, Tobin, Ortenblad, a um, bunch of others, I'm forgetting the names, but yeah, just really fast field, maybe 25 or 30 riders, it was windy, Brisbane's right by the water, and um, if you haven't done this course, it's, it's a lot of fun, it's it's technical, it's got that hairpin right there, and it's um, it's really short too, so, so the laps just kind of tick by, uh, my lap counter on, on the screen, by the way, is wrong, so forget that, but but um, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll just get into it here. All right, 13 minutes into the race, and Chris Reichert is already up the road. Got Ariel uh, chasing, and uh, Chris Reichert's always fast. I overheard that he'd already done like four hours the same day. Comes out, still dominates local crit. So probably training for nationals or something. He's just always fast. I never feel good when he's up the road because. Um, God, he did this to me at Santa Cruz. He got away, and he just never comes back. He's got, he's got such a, a big motor that um, that you just can't let him get away. So I'm, I'm trying to uh, kind of cut into his lead here. The chase, chase effort's not really going so well. So I'm just kind of taking Ariel's lead here. He's the guy in the blue up there, and and I'm just going to try to chase it back. But um, Roman. Chris Reichert's teammate is on my wheel, and uh, well, the whole field's on my wheel, but that's fine with me because I just want to um, go super hard. So, so we're cutting, we're cutting here again, and I'm trying to kind of motivate some guys to chase, try to get a uh, teammate on my wheel. And it's more of the same. Got Chris Reichert still up the road, and just having kind of an ineffective chase effort. So, so I'm trying to motivate guys. Got another teammate, Christopher Bell, is up here, and and. Uh, yeah, just trying to trying to pull the field, trying to bring that gap down without completely turning myself inside out. So I was trying to save a little something for the sprint, but at this point, Robert Skinner has bridged up to Chris Reichert up the road, and and now I'm just pretty desperate to chase it back, really digging deep. Wanted to say something about this hairpin too. If you take it right, like right through here on the apex. You can um, make a lot of position up really easily, not have to burn a bunch of matches doing that, and carry a lot of speed through the corner. Um, I did that effectively through there. I didn't, I didn't come underneath anybody or um, cut anybody off, but I uh, just took a really effective line, carried my speed, and you can save a lot of energy coming through. That. And that's the difference. In the later laps, you really notice that. You really notice that um, you don't have to sprint up to 1,000 watts every single time you come out of that corner. You can carry, still carry your speed. That's why it's so um, it's so dangerous when a guy like Chris gets off the front because uh, you know he's he's taking that corner really smart, really clean, really efficiently, and um, all it takes is the guy on the front of the chase to to make a poor line, and you know you can lose a handful of seconds every single lap. So I got frustrated and um, I went solo because the chase effort just wasn't happening. And um, I was seeing if I could bridge across. It's not really my style, but they were right there. They were like maybe 15 seconds, so I just went for it. I'm training for 10-day stage race in Chicago, and and uh, why not? So I was going for it. And you can see them in the distance there, and it was just like it was torturous. It was like dangling a carrot on a stick in front of me. So it didn't work. I got close, and the chase effort didn't work either. So um, so here we are. Had Robert Skinner bridge up to Chris Reichert, basically the two strongest guys in the race, um, and uh, we weren't represented. Neither was Cycle Sport, neither was Olympic Club. 
So um, now we're racing for uh, fourth place because you got Ariel sneaking away, and he's he's in between somewhere. Um, but I just I just kind of sat up. I was uh, pretty de dejected, and and um, I was just going to go for the field sprint at this point. So this is uh, two laps to go here. It's a short course though, so hang in there because um, I was really out of position through here, and um, really until the kind of the final moments of the race. But I was able to move up managed to um, to take some good lines, get a little bit lucky in a, in a couple of instances, you'll see. But um, moving up on the downwind side here, the wind is left to right through this section. And then as you make this turn, um, it's kind of a headwind, but there's a lot of tree cover, so you don't feel it as much as that exposed section right up to the start finish. And I'm um, just trying to take this corner as efficiently as possible. Still really out of position. But I find Tobin's wheel here, and that's that's fine with me. I'm 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 fine hanging behind Tobin because I know he's gonna manage to um, to find the right wheel and have a good position. You can see him right there, kind of uh, take that Mike Spikes development rider to the inside. Um, I don't think that was on accident. You probably saw him trying to to come underneath, and he wasn't having any of it. So again, really short laps here. We're coming into the bell lap, so this is um, just a little over a lap to go. And um, it's so important to take that. That was the last corner right there. So important to take that corner first because you have this like 150 meter sprint, sprint from there. Right to left wind through here. I want to make up position. I am not happy with my position here. I see, okay, so I see sun power come on the outside there. I'm gonna jump on that. This is a, a block headwind through here. It's important to have a wheel. Don't want to be making up ground through here. But I do that anyway because it's kind of slow. Oh, and there goes Justin. He <laughs> Cheeky move, he turns his head, he sees me, doesn't want me to come underneath, so he, he swings out and prevents that from happening. Smart, smart though, I'm, I'm fine with that, that was great. Um, end up on Aaron's wheel. Now Aaron's super fast. Aaron Patterson on Pete's right here in front of me. I'm fine behind him. It's not quite fast enough on the front though, so you see some guys starting to swarm and that's the last thing I want coming into this hairpin. So, um, just need a good line through this hairpin and uh, hear Justin screaming. Now the Dolce got to go, but of course he doesn't want to go and sit at the front. So now we're sprinting out of this. Through, through here it's really hard. It's so technical. It's really hard to make up position. And likewise, it's it's really hard to, to lose position. So still not quite in the best position, but you see Justin on the left just get boxed in so hard right there. And then there goes Aaron, and I take this inside line, and it just really worked out for me. Got a little bit lucky there, went right instead of left, and just had a clean set of wheels for the finish. Um, let's take another look at Justin getting boxed in because that was pretty funny. All right, my teammate Andrew's on the front keeping it really fast. Now, Justin's in the blue shorts, the red top there, two wheels in front of me. He's a um, super fast sprinter and unquestionably in better position at this point in the race. But my teammate Andrew pulls off to the left, and for whatever reason, Justin decides to go left also, effectively getting boxed in so hard right there. And I just turn to the right here and follow Aaron through. Now, Dolce has this great opportunity to close the door on me right there, that moment. But he leaves it open for me, and that was the big difference. Um, he really should have shut the door on me, prevent me from coming underneath like that. And now I just have an open look to the line, so that was kind of the way the finish worked out. Everything worked in my favor. And sometimes that's the way it works, sometimes you get boxed in. Sorry, Justin. <laughs> Shout out to the uh, Brisbane promoters for putting on another awesome race. And uh, thanks for watching. See you guys at the next one.